The hierarchy of interesting camera gear goes something like this. Camera, lens, lighting, audio, I don't know, camera cage, tripod, maybe? Uh, what we're gonna talk about today is like, you, you can't even see it. What's up, I'm Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. And today I wanna to talk about a whole bunch of very boring, but very useful pieces of equipment that I have and why they're so damn useful. I also wanna talk a little bit about the sort of future of this channel and what I've learned so far in this past couple months. And I'll, I'll do that at the end. So if you want, you can skip ahead and, and just go watch that now, but don't do that. Links to everything I'm talking about today will be down below in the description. They are affiliate links. So it means that I'll get a little kickback if you do use them. I think I've, I've never actually used affiliate links yet. So I'm not totally sure if they work, but hey, if you, if you buy something, I'll, I'll be able to tell if it works. So, uh, buy something also starting out with a bang tape yeah that's right the sticky stuff it's sticky and necessary and it's great i never go anywhere without tape uh well that's not true i go to the grocery store without tape i don't go to a shoot without tape i always have gaff tape and, and usually some kind of fashion tape with me body tape that kind of thing what i like about gaff tape is that it doesn't really leave any residue it's sticky enough for most things and it's very easy to hide it, it also feels professional because it's called gaff tape, named after a gaffer, right? And gaffers are professionals. Yeah. Now, I have a little pack here, and I pretty much always have this with me on a shoot as well. This has got some kind of sticky tape from Nextcare. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of little moleskin pads, and it also has this here, body tape. Body tape is super important and super helpful. I use this all the time for hiding mics. Uh, sticking fun weird objects to people for a weird shoot uh, generally just being invisible when you need it to be you can also use it to tape clothing to people which is what it's actually used for honorable mention does go to this stuff here moleskin tape this is super cool because you can use this to kind of quiet a mic what you can do with this is you can basically just slice a piece cut it in half and put your mic in between it and then that'll kind of sandwich it and that that's really helpful because this stuff will uh, dampen a lot of noise and some of the like scratchiness and stuff. Uh, honorable mention goes to like medical tape and, and K tape and all these other weird tapes that I've found random uses for over time. But yeah, sticky stuff. It's the good stuff. The sticky icky. What? Ah, that's gonna get me banned. Okay, slightly less boring, C stands. Uh, C stands, C stands for century. Did you know that? C stands make life on set easier, safer, faster, more productive. Uh, you can use them to hold lights, mics, flags, diffusion, reflectors, your coffee, whatever you want. Don't use them for coffee, that's dangerous. We're actually gonna take a quick pause here for a little bit of C-stand etiquette. Uh, now this is coming from the fact that I do work as well as a grip on television and film productions, and uh, I was taught very clearly the right and wrong way to use a C-stand, and everybody kind of has some little things that they do themselves, but the big things are this. Position your object, weight, arm over the tallest legs. Use a grip head the right way, meaning a grip head should tighten with gravity and weight, not loosen. Put a sandbag on it, maybe two, and, and don't leave the C-stand without securing it. You can also put tennis balls on the back to make it safer, but that's less cool. Uh, no, I, <laughs> that's a good thing to do. I don't do it only because I've never done it on set and that's never been a thing, but it's probably a smart thing to do when you're not on a commercial set where you don't have the control and you're just being told what to do and they say shut up we don't have any tennis balls no one told me to shut up i don't think somebody might have told me to shut up i don't pay attention to that kind of thing too much i really like c stands but obviously i do i work as a grip grips like c stands i like saying c stands i don't want to say c stand anymore moving on okay still boring but slightly less is flash accessories if you don't use flash you should if you wanna know how to use flash and you're a little unsure, I have some videos about how to position lighting and that kind of stuff and I'm working on a flash video. Uh, I think flash is getting very popular, so it's a good thing to know. I recently picked up this. This is the Godox AKR1 accessory kit for round flash head is what this is called. Okay, so looking at this, you get a, a few different things here that I really like. So you get this dome diffusion, which is great. Uh, this helps to just bounce the light and wrap it around a little bit more. I found it pretty effective overall. You also get sort of just a, a straight diffusion here that has a bit of this like kind of honeycomb grid on it. You also get an actual grid that can go on top of the round flash head. So this is cool. This helps to just kind of ensure that the light is a little bit more focused where you want it. 
Um, this guy here, you can use to put different gels in. So it comes with all these gels. I haven't really experimented with these too much, but you can use these to uh, augment the light and to match the lighting source that you're trying to, uh, to shoot in. It also comes with this bad boy here, a little snoot and some barn doors. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with all of this. Basically, you've got all this stuff to work with and uh, it fits in this tiny little package. I think it's really helpful to have something like this because if you don't know where you're gonna be exactly, it can be really tough to know where you're gonna be able to bounce stuff off of. But if you have something like this where it comes with a little flash bounce card and all this kind of stuff, you can just go into a situation with a little more confidence and I think that's helpful. So next up, camera, cage, handle. You thought I was gonna say something fun. You were like, oh, it's just gonna make like a camera rig video. No, just just the handle, just the handle. Um, I've had a bunch of handles. Uh, this one is from newer. I, I've used a whole bunch of different ones, uh, mostly the budget friendly ones. And I've settled on this one for now, at least. Things I really like about it, it's got a whole bunch of different mounting options, which is cool. Um, but it's also a NATO rail, which is really nice. And it has a super soft grip to it. That is my favorite thing. It's big enough and it's comfortable enough for my hand, which I really appreciate. And to be honest, I, I kind of feel like it's, it's the best I've used of the small rig or tilter or whatever. If you're like, well, Chris, that's not very professional. Like, shouldn't you be using small rig or, or tilter or something like that? Isn't newer kind of trash? I'll let you in on a little secret. They're all trash. I mean, they're not, they're not trash, but here's the thing. Working on professional sets, like big budget sets, I've never seen small rig. I've never seen tilta. I've never seen wooden camera. Uh, I'm sure people use those, but I've never seen them. What I have seen is things like Secudo, Mid-49. I've seen Condor Blue, but but I can't afford those. And, and they're kind of overkill. And, and I don't know if you can afford them, but I, I don't want to spend my money on that knowing that I don't really need that. This works really well. It's super comfortable. It's budget friendly. And if I lose it, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. But if I was to try and replicate my cage system using Zakudo or M49, I would be, I don't know, spending a thousand dollars. And I don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a cage because I'm not making anything that requires that. Okay. Next one here. This one is not boring. It's one is boring. Yeah, it's boring. It's, it's foam core. Chris's favorite. If you have watched anything on this channel when it comes to lighting, you know that foam core is like one of my favorite things ever. Take 20 bucks, go to Michael's or Walmart or your local art store, preferably, and buy a few different pieces, get them in different sizes, get them in white, get them in black, and, and it's going to make your life easier. You're going to be able to bounce light and augment light really quickly on the fly. It's cheap, and if you lose them, it's no big deal. They're kind of hard to lose because they're huge. Uh, that's maybe the one downside is that they're kind of big and they don't fold up, right? Maybe diffusion and like proper, you know, like Matthews diffusion flags and all that stuff are the better way, but this is the best budget way. And, and it's something that you can just go get anytime you need it. If you want to learn more about that, I've made a few different lighting videos all about how I would augment light using things like foam core. And you can check those out. I'll leave a link in the, in the description below. You can jump to that, but don't do it yet because we still have some more stuff to talk about. Numero six. Haha, <laughs> Velcro cable ties. I, you probably saw these sitting here and you were like, oh, when's he gonna talk about the cable ties? When's he gonna talk about the cable ties? Right now, don't worry. Hot take, but I do not like bongo ties. I find them annoying to use and finicky and they never really keep things as secure as I want them to. And they're just, I don't know, I don't like bongos. That's not part of it. I Bongos are cool. Anyways, enter Velcro cable ties. These things rule. I use them on all sorts of stuff. You've probably come across one of these uh, if you haven't actually bought them, they probably come with something that you've bought in the past when it comes to like cable management. But these things rule because you can just slip them on and they attach themselves. They're really easy to use. I use them for all kinds of different stuff and I just find them so much more useful, fast, easy, and affordable than something like bongo ties. This guy here costs, I think 10 bucks on Amazon. I don't know where you can get these locally. I, I would say go get them locally if you can, but if you can't link in the description to the the Amazon and uh, like I said, um, this is just so much easier than a bongo tie. Bongo ties suck. They don't suck, they're fine. I just don't use them. Okay, so that's it. Uh, those are the helpful things that are boring and cheap and effective and necessary for what I do. I would say this here is a pretty good representation of something that comes with me on every single shoot. And I'm curious, what are some of the boring but necessary things that come with you on shoots that you are very happy that you have just like gaff tape. But now it's time for that clickbaity part where I was like, I'm going to talk about the future of this channel and you should wait till the end because that's what YouTubers tell you. First and foremost, 
thank you for watching. It's really, really cool to see, to like wake up in the morning and jump onto the things and see that more people have subscribed, that people are commenting and liking things or disliking things and telling me what I could improve upon. It's all cool. I, I appreciate it a lot. You know, when I, when I decided to start this, I told myself there was a couple things I really wanted to keep in mind. And the first one was that I'm just gonna put the reps in. I'm gonna make two videos a week to get into the flow of production, to get used to it, to get comfortable with the camera, to get used to this whole idea of like being a YouTuber and, and see if I can really start to gain some traction. As a solo creator, I have to film, edit, color, brand, do ev everything for this, for you to see it. I give myself one essentially like work day a week per video, but it's not really one work day a week because I can't take two full days just to make this stuff. So I have five or six hours per video. That's to shoot, cut, edit, color, put on the titles, all that stuff. So if I have 10 hours a week to dedicate to YouTube and I want to do two videos, I have to get comfortable with the reality that I'm not going to be making stuff at the high level of production quality that I think I might be capable of but I am going to be able to make something that is content that is actually valuable, you know? And, and something that I really appreciate is that the feedback that I've gotten so far has been so much about the content and not nearly as much about the way things look. I really appreciate when people give me stuff to work on and things I can do better to try and make more interesting videos for y'all. But people have just been so good about helping me to grow and, and appreciating the reality that what I'm trying to do here is to just put in the reps. The second part, and this is more complicated, is that when I've been creating this stuff, I've really wanted to sort of hit three main things. I wanted to create things that are educational, inspiring, and that allow me to connect. I can't always do all three. That That's a tough go for every kind of video, but I maybe two out of three, maybe that's good. The problem is that I don't think the connection part is there yet because I have not let my full self come through on camera. If we're gonna do this for the foreseeable future, then we have to talk a little bit about who I actually am. And the reality is that I am goofier, I am weirder, I swear more, I am way more into talking about strange, off the beaten path, esoteric bullshit, and that is something that I've been hesitating to put out fully. I've been peppering it in here and there, but I'm ready to just kind of commit to that. And I really want to know if you are too. That's the whole point of this is that there's no, there's no limitations, right? There's no barriers. It's YouTube. I can throw whatever I want up here and you guys can help me <laughs> to, to understand what you like and what you don't. And, and that feedback is, is super cool. But that's what I'm going to commit to. Let me know in the comments if you're down for that. E either way, I'm going to do it, but I'd love to know if you're along for the ride. Why are you here? What are you looking to get? Help me build the kind of community that you want to be a part of on YouTube. So thank you so much. Bye. Peace.